52 things I've learned in 52 years, part three. First of all, before we get started, I wanna thank you so much for everything you've done. You've shared so many incredible comments with me and uh, we're putting them to use. So let's get started. Read, it is essential to creating new thoughts and new ideas. And I just started a book club with my good friend, Dr. Judith Joseph, and we are reading a ton of books. We're trying to get two done a week, which has been quite the feat, but we're having a good time doing it and sharing our ideas. It's called the Well Read Book Club, and we're talking about all things wellness and mental health. And right now I'm reading the book, I'm Not a Morning Person by Chris Carr. And let me tell you, it is incredible. And it gives me a lot of thought throughout the day. So my mind is not thinking about things that are not important. Books let me think about things that are. No matter what you do, somebody is going to find something wrong with it. So let go of trying to please people. This is something that has taken me decades to learn actually. It's not an easy thing to do because we are kind of ingrained to be people pleasers and figure out what somebody is thinking and try to please them or try to impress them in some way. And I have learned that if you have that confidence inside yourself and you're worried about pleasing yourself first, you're not worried about what anyone else is thinking. Let go of that. It will give you a lot of relief and a lot of extra time. Okay. Sometimes you just got to accept people for who they are. And this is for your own sake. When we go through the world trying to change people and trying to make somebody into who we want them to be, the only person that's unhappy is us. It does not work. People are who they are. You can give them ideas and you can give them thoughts and you can share your thoughts with them, but you cannot change somebody. You should still love yourself really love yourself while you're working toward the person that you want to be. Sometimes we say, when I get to, or when I become, or as soon as I get this new job, or when I'm in a new relationship, I'm going to really start loving who I am. You've got to do that right now, no matter where you are, no matter what situation you're in. And trust me, it took me a long time to figure out how to love myself and figure out how to appreciate who I was in that moment. And once I started doing that, I actually became the person that I wanted to be, not the person that I was hoping I was gonna be one day and always looking toward the future because these moments are really precious and we don't always have a lot of them and we never know what tomorrow brings. So start loving yourself right now. Okay, this is my favorite one. Well, not my favorite, but it's one of my favorite ones. I wish I could say it a hundred times. You can always start again. And it's scary because I know as we get older, I mean, we're doing 52 things I've learned in 52 years. As we get older, it's scary thinking I'm too old. I've got different responsibilities. I'm not able to do it. I've got to take care of aging parents. I've got to take care of my kids, but there is always a way for you to start again. It doesn't mean you have to start up here. You just have to start over if that's what you really want to do. You, I don't want you to ever feel like you are stuck in one place and you're not able to start again. And I definitely don't want age to ever feel like it's a barrier because there are some amazing, amazing stories out there of people that have started over again at all ages. So my motto is, and my thought is you can create your best life at any age. This one is a tough one, but it's important to talk about. Don't be afraid to break up with a friend who is dulling your spark. I had this several years ago and it was really hard. It was somebody that was in my life for a long time, starting way, way back in school. But it was somebody that I always felt like um, I wasn't good enough around. And I always felt like I had to prove myself to. And I just didn't feel like I was that person that I really wanted to be. And I was somebody different around her than I was around myself. And it was really dulling whatever I wanted to put out into the world. And unfortunately we had to part ways and it, it was a really tough decision and it didn't come with uh, ease and it came with a lot of heartache. But I will tell you the people that I have found since then have helped me become who I really want to be. And I hope that I help them do the same thing. So please remember that. If you know me, you know, I love having a to-do list. There's nothing wrong with having a plan and having direction, you know, but sometimes you've got to let it flow and expect the unexpected because it's going to happen. Everything or nothing is going to go according to plan. And I've learned that over the years, you know, I've, I've learned over the years, I've lived in different cities. I never expected to live in. I've met different people. I've done different things. I would have never thought I was going to have a matchmaking business or be here on YouTube talking to you. Uh, I think you really have to 
go with whatever comes your way. It doesn't mean to just be willy-nilly and not pay attention to things. Have a direction, but be okay if there are some winds in that road and in that path because those windy areas in the path are always pretty cool. This next one's gonna be tough. You have to realize that people's issues are a projection of what they are going through. So let that sit for just a second. Oftentimes we come up to somebody or we have a conversation with somebody or we're texting with somebody or talking to somebody and we think whatever they're going through has everything to do with us. And that is not the case. And I, I learned that way too many times in life, uh, trying to change what somebody was dealing with and thinking that whatever was going on and whatever their projection was had everything to do with me and I had to change it and I had to kind of morph myself. And uh, I you know, really learned that in relationships, relationships with, with guys that didn't serve me one in particular I call my mr. big and I was always thinking I had to change who I was and what I was doing because of how he interpreted things and that was not the case it was about him it was about where he was and the sooner I let go of that oh gosh I felt really really free so just be aware that someone's projection has to do with them it doesn't have to do with you no matter what you do please be so good at it you're irreplaceable and that doesn't mean you have to work 24 seven and make yourself crazy. What it means is really invest your passion in whatever it is that you do. And if you don't love what you're doing, stop doing it. But I think it's important to be so good at whatever it is. I don't care if you're an accountant or a teacher or you're teaching a class or you're a digital content creator or you're a news reporter, whatever it is that you're doing. Make sure that you're really good at it and put your little unique spin on it so you're irreplaceable in that. And don't look at what somebody else is doing. Pay attention to how you're gonna do it differently. A mature, healthy love is worth waiting for. A lot of you know I got remarried at the age of 50. And um, I never thought after my divorce I would get married again. I, I thought that was, a, that was the last thing I wanted after a difficult divorce. But I will tell you this, there is something, and I waited a long time to find love like that, like true love, true, somebody who I really wanted to walk the earth with. A mature and a healthy love where you feel great about yourself and you feel just as good about loving that other person is definitely worth waiting for. Rushing into a relationship so you feel like you have a partner and you can say, you know, party of two. Rushing into something because you wanna travel with somebody. Rushing into something so you're not the only one of your friends that's single is not worth it. Please trust me on this. I really think it is important. It doesn't mean you wait forever and it doesn't mean you just accept where you are, but it means really investing the time in whatever relationship it is that you're looking at. I call it four seasons, letting, you know, getting to know somebody for four seasons, winter, fall, spring, summer, a year. And I know it sounds a little silly, but I think it's important to know who somebody is during all those different times that come up in a year because people will tell you who they are. If you want to grow in any part of your life, you have got to be okay with being vulnerable. And you know, I don't think we're taught to be vulnerable. Uh, and it's something that's a little scary. It's admitting things that you're not comfortable with and uh, maybe sometimes just feeling like, oh gosh, am I ever gonna get there? But I think that if you want to grow, no matter where we're talking about, if we're talking about a relationship, we're talking about a career, we're just talking about a friendship, you have got to allow yourself to be vulnerable and don't equate vulnerability with being weak because it's not weak to be vulnerable. Please stop over explaining when you make a decision. Just own that decision. I, I think myself as a woman, I spent a long time saying like, hey, I just wanna let you know why I decided whatever it is, whether it's at work, whether it's in a friendship, because I felt like I wanted somebody to agree with that decision, right? Agree with whatever it was I was doing, whether I was changing jobs at the time or whether I was making a decision that served me best. And I felt like I needed everybody's buy-in, right? When I made that decision. And instead, what I have found and the people that I respect the most and the people that I listen to the most own their decisions. And they're not asking for everybody else's buy-in in the room before they realize it is a good decision. 
try that and see if that changes things because it really did for me. And it took me a long time. I was well into my 40s before I realized that I did not have to explain every single decision that I made, that I just needed to own it and then people would understand it. Okay, start writing the comments now because I know I'm gonna get them on this one. If you are not feeling overconfident, you've gotta fake it. And I know that people don't like that and I know that it's not easy to even say the words fake it. And so maybe those aren't the right words. Maybe the truth is, is just try to be confident and go with it and eventually it comes to you. I don't know if you've ever walked out the door and just kind of smiled and then finally your body kind of feels like, hey, maybe the day's not so bad. That's what I've had to do a lot of times with confidence. There was a lot of times that I was getting on the air, especially when I was dealing with a lot of the menopause symptoms that I've talked about where I felt anything but confident. I felt like I didn't know if I was gonna get the right words out, if I was gonna be able to read the word in the teleprompter, if I was going to be able to ad lib with the person that was sitting next to me and just be able to talk freely because I had such a hard time with brain fog that really is debilitating. And I had to I had to be there, I had to be on set and do that. And I had to fake it. I had to get on set and be like, okay, I'm confident, I've got this, I've got this. And eventually it would flow. Um, I, I hate to use the word fake it, but I don't know another word to replace that with. So I think that if you are not feeling confident, you've just got to go with it, act as if, move forward and let me know if that changes things for you. I've talked about this a lot before, but I think it's so important. If a friend breaks up with you, it's okay to mourn that loss. And also remember there is a time and a place for everyone. It's hard. It's hard when you feel like you've lost a friendship and a person and you feel like you've lost memories. You've not lost those memories, first of all, with that person. But maybe where you are right now is not where that person is anymore. And maybe that relationship doesn't serve you. It doesn't mean that one day it couldn't come back around, but I don't want you to feel like you have lost the memories of that person if you're no longer friends with that person. That just means right now that is not what's serving you. Okay, that was part three. We've got part four next, but if you get a chance, subscribe or leave your comments below and let me know if there's anything you wanna to add to that list because you guys left some really good comments last time and I've gotta use those in the next video. Anyway, I hope to see you next time. Thanks for joining me here on YouTube and let me know if there's something else you wanna see or you wanna talk about because I love the interaction with this community. See you later. <music>